episode 19 back again slowly getting to inching towards that episode 26 half a year i'll be um i think a little bit uh happy with myself once we get to that level solo episode again this week um still reaching out to a few people to try and get some interviews lined up still hoping to get a couple of uh, close running friends on soon um, one of my close friends has recently run his first marathon after failing a marathon um, due to some heat and some hip, hip issues. Another close friend and a uh, good athlete who I coached some years ago to the Winter Olympics in 2010, hoping to have a bit of a chat to him. Um, he's got some good insights into making the Olympic Games, post-Olympic Games, um, the amount of training, the funding, lots of interesting conversations there. But Today, and they're obviously a little bit shorter when I'm just solo, but today I want to talk about um, injuries, I suppose, and some running injuries that a lot of people suffer with. Um, and I think predominantly around, you know, for me, it's been getting back into running. I've been struggling with um, initially some calf issues and got past those pretty quickly with the aid of a good physio. And then now I'm struggling more with hamstring type issues, but are glute related. Um, good friend over in Adelaide, who he'll know who I'm referring to, he's suffering with the same thing. He's getting uh, more tendinopathy type issues, and I've had these in the past as a sprinter. But I'll just go back to a little bit when I first started to run some, get back into running. And when I say run some distance, obviously, you know, I started like many people, one kilometre, two kilometres, you know, adding 500 metres per run. I was really struggling with my calves and I initially thought, that's it, I'm done. I just can't run anymore. My calves just won't allow me to. They've just had so much. So I took myself off to my physio, tail between my legs as we do, really disappointed. And we quickly discovered it was more back related. And I've always had back, lower back injuries and I've always had disc issues. And, you know, often people talk about oh, you know, I've got a herniated disc or a slip disc, which I absolutely despise the term slip disc. I nearly would go as far to say if you're speaking to a, any sort of practitioner and they're telling you you've got a slip disc, you'll probably find somebody else. Um, and I always ask the question, where did the disc slip to? Has it slipped away? You slip down your back, slip down your leg? The discs can't technically slip. Um, they can herniate. You know, the nucleus inside the disc will bulge out and make a, a small herniation and press on nerves. But everyone's got some sort of back issues going on because as you've been loading your body for your entire life, we've had wear and tear in our discs. If you've been some sort of, you know, manual labourer or you've actually, you know, played a lot of sport or you've sat for extended periods of time during your life, everyone's got back issues. So, But they are, majority of the time, they're overcomable. And I think most people just um, take the route where they believe that nothing can be done about it. And I recall having this conversation with a physio years ago as well about, you know, people expect a miracle from the physiotherapist, the physical therapist, they come into his studio and he gets to spend 45 minutes to an hour with them, maybe one day a week. And then for the rest of the week, you know, 40 hours of that, they're potentially sitting in a chair and, um, a good chunk of that week they're obviously you know sleeping and or they're sitting around they don't actually take the time to actually go and implement all the strategies and exercises that the physio give to you um, to actually progress and move forward you know he's got one hour he's not going to make much of a difference in one hour per week so the exercises he gives you are way more important than the one hour that he's spending with you on that particular day so You've got to go and do the work. Um, and it was interesting, you know, speaking to the physio that I went along to, and I've got great physios here in Sydney. They're all runners, which makes it really um, interesting just speaking to guys in that space. And we quickly discovered that it was just my lower back was just, you know, firing up my calves. And we started to implement some, you know, some lower back stretches. And I've written about one of the stretches they gave me, and they called the Richard Simmons. Um, it's a really nice name if you go and Google Richard Simmons when he was doing aerobics back in the day. So there's this particular exercise. You basically put your legs as far as apart you need to to be able to touch your fingers just on the ground. Um, once you can just put your fingertips on the ground, you unlock one knee at a time. 
So imagine you're standing with your feet apart, you've got your fingers touching the ground, and you're unlocking one knee, just ever so slightly, just unlocking the knee, then locking the knee, then unlocking the other knee. And then you're doing that repetitively back and forwards, unlock, lock, unlock, lock, side to side, a little bit like a dance, hence the Richard Simmons. And this just slightly, ever so slightly mobilizes your lower back and your sacroiliac joints and gives you a really nice neural stretch down the back of your calves. And I have to say, it helped me so quickly um, between that and another small stretch, which I'll try and explain this one as well. And if you are st- suffering with any sort of potentially a calf issue or lower back issues, if you do these two stretches consistently, and when I say consistently, I mean morning, once or twice throughout the day and night, um, not just this once a week, you've got to be doing them three to four times a day, you will find um, rapid improvement. So the other one, imagine you get a milk crate or a small stool, you stand with one foot on the stool, the other foot flat on the ground, you then try and reach towards the foot that's on the ground and you might only be able to reach to your knee and you pulse, you stop where your fingers stop or where your back is obviously um, tight and won't go any further and then just pulse up and down trying to reach towards the floor while that other foot is on the stool then swap legs. Again, you're just getting this really nice small mobilization in the lower back. And for some of you, you may get a bit bit in the hamstring and a bit in the calf. Those two stretches um, helped me a lot and they got me back to running quite quickly um, and relieved all my calf pain. I basically haven't had any calf irritation or that sort of uh, neural feeling I was getting in my calf since. I keep getting tight calves my fault, probably don't spend enough time stretching. Um, I've been putting a huge amount of time the last couple of weeks stretching and I find the time to stretch by sitting on the floor in the night. Um, if I you know, decide to put some rubbish television on or I do consume a bit of YouTube, it's how I learn and I'm very selective on who I learn from out in the, the, uh, the social media world. Um, I'm a little bit anti-social media, but I do find there is some good content on YouTube. Um, Knees over toes guy I've been following a little bit recently. I'm a bit of a Kelly Starrett fan, although I've watched most of his stuff now and I know a lot of it. Um, And, you know, there's a few other guys online that are worthwhile having a bit of a look at. But the other injury, which I think a lot of uh, runners will also suffer with is this hamstring tendinopathy. Um, And it's typically an overuse injury of the hamstring. You've got this constant pulling on the attachments can be below your knee where the hamstrings attach um, across the back of the knee there, but predominantly, and in my experience, they've always been up high around the issue of tuberosity um, in the glute area and across that sort of glute medius, glute into glute maximus, you know, butt region. Most hamstring tendinopathy injuries are a lack of weakness in the glutes. So if you look at somebody running from behind, on one side, they might have a glute weakness, and every time they foot strike, their hip will slightly dip. And maybe to the um, untrained eye and the average person, they won't be able to identify this. But if you actually film somebody somebody from behind and slow it down, you will see this slight dip in one hip. And you can imagine foot strike after foot strike, that hip just you know taking that small dip each time that you're creating this drag on the glute. And often it's a case that your glute is not firing the right order, your hamstring is doing too much of the work and the glute is not switching on um, to actually hold that hip stable. So, you know, one of the first things you can do to relieve some of that tendinopathy or even, you know, hamstring issue is to strengthen the glute. And it's not about going and doing, you know, 200 pound squats and deadlifts and um, leg press. They're the most innocuous exercises to get that glute endurance back and to stabilize the glute. Um, And one of the best exercises, again, if I can try and um, uh, verbally explain this uh, so you can actually visually picture what I'm doing, standing against, standing on close to a wall, getting either a foam roller, um, a small, small smallish Swiss ball, one of those blow up balls, and putting the ball 
between your knee, you're gonna lift, you're gonna stand, let's say you're standing on your right leg, lift your left leg up in the air, put the ball between your knee and the wall, and then with the right leg, you're going to dip about three or four inches, 10 centimeters um, with your right leg, and then just stand back up straight again. And do this with a slight lean of your torso to load up the glute more, and you're not trying to squat down, you're doing this slight dip. We're trying to actually get that glute med um, to turn on and stabilize. And basically you can do these until your glute is burning, just burn out with them. Um, the other good exercise is to, and I'm just gonna give you two very simple exercises to try, lay on the floor, on your back, heels close to your butt, knees bent, feet flat on the floor, and literally just lifting your butt off the ground. And if you can do this quite easy without a huge amount of pain, then straighten one leg out up in the air and then lift with one leg only. And again, just do these until you burn your glute out. So two good exercises that will just strengthen that glute area, um, particularly if you're struggling with a little bit of hamstring pain, as I well am at the moment. I've just been for a run this morning just to see if my glute is going to cope. I only ran three kilometers and straight away it's still a bit irritated. So I'm struggling with um, that glute strength at the moment. So I'm not gonna make it too long. They're kind of, uh, as I mentioned, I wanna just create um, some podcasts that are informative, give you some ideas around some of these exercises. But just to recap, you know, if you're suffering with tight calves, um, and I'll put a link to some of the articles I've written in, some, in the show notes as well to uh, the Richard Simmons, um, and also the stool calf stretch or lower back stretch, and the glute strengthening exercises with the ball against the wall, just dipping ever so slightly, and also laying on your back, feet flat on the floor you know, the glute bridge and then going to a one leg with that as well. Anyway, happy running. Have a great day. And um, until next time, bye for now.